little girl and she's dressed in a white gown and she's freaking me out. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California and this channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. And today we are going on a field trip. So for today's field trip, we're in the Central Valley. This is agronomist Matt, yes. the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> if you guys don't follow him on Instagram, you got to check him out. He's like the TikTok real farmer king. I wouldn't say that. You but do thank a great you. job. And uh, if you watched my past episode with Ryan, California farmer, even though you guys have not met in person, they're kind of like brothers. Yes, they're we are. very similar. And you guys are both hilarious. Thank you. So, okay, so first off, do you want to explain what an agronomist is for people that have no idea? Yeah, so an agronomist, our, pretty much our job is to help farmers make money. Oh. Okay, that's our job. I need one of those. Yeah, help farmers <laughs> make money. So what we do that is we try to, we try to increase the health of the, of the plant. And we do that by, by taking into account of what's in the soil, you know, the nutrients that are in the soil, how can we access those nutrients that are already there, mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that soil nutrient bank? How do we access that? How do we increase microbiology? Because there's a big symbiotic relationship between the plant, the roots, and the, and the microbes. Okay. And, uh, and, and we, we, try to, we try to put it, match it all together to get the optimum health in the plant. And we all know that when we do that, we can have the best fruit. Right. Healthier plants, bigger fruit, better yields, right. more money for the farmer. Yes. And so do you do a lot of soil testing? I, like, I, is that a big part of your that's, job? That's part. That's a very big part of it. We'll do tissue testing, soil testing, and uh, we, we analyze analyze all the numbers, the trends, and, and we use that as a base to, to go about making our recommendations. So have you always known you wanted to be an agronomist? That's a good question. I, I Were did, you like five years old and you're I don't like, think I'm going to be an agronomist <laughs> I, when I, I grow up? I don't think I realized what an agronomist was until college. I had no idea. I thought farming, the whole industry of farming was just a farmer. Okay. So from a young age, I always knew I wanted to be a farmer. And uh, my, my dad was a farmer. Um, I'm pretty much a fourth generation farmer on both sides. Oh, nice. My mom and my dad's side. So yeah, that's what I thought I, I, I wanted to do. My, my brother, he, uh, when I was in, when I was in high school, he purchased a, a fertilizer manufacturing company. Okay. And uh, he started, he, you know, letting me know, you know, I, one day I'd like you to come work for me and and uh, be an agronomist. And those, those, I didn't really know what that meant that time. But as college, you know, I started taking college courses. I kind of came to understand what that was, and and here I am. Okay, so part of being an agronomist is you actually manage a whole bunch of different types of crops. Yeah. So do you know off the top of your head how many different crops you manage? I, I have no idea. Uh, I mean like five, uh, Blueberries, ten? cherries. Blueberries? Yeah. Ooh. Blueberries and cherries, table grapes, wine, raisin. Um, you do do citrus. raisins. I do. They're just not around here. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, pistachios, almonds, uh, pecans. What else? So how do you keep it all straight? Because I mean, every crop needs oh, totally gosh. different care, yeah, right? It's, it's it's hard. It takes it, it takes time, honestly. To learn each thing. Every every crop wants you know they're, they're it's unique on which nutrients that it that it wants, how much of it, the the balance of the nutrients within the within the within the plant as well. And uh, I wish it was all the same. It'd make my job a lot of easier. Of course it would. For sure. <laughs> it would make farmers' lives easier. Yes, definitely. Okay, so what are we in right now? Th these are navels. Navels. Yeah, navel oranges. And are they are they um, evergreen? They are. Evergreen. Yeah. I have an orange tree at my house mm -hmm. that I get a lot of crap for. Crop Be or crap? Crap. Okay. Because it always has oranges on it. It's also huge. Uh -huh. Like there's no oranges at this height. Yeah. It's huge. Been there, I have no idea how long. And people always are mad at me for not picking the oranges. Yeah. But they never taste good. Uh -huh. But I've never done anything to it. Huh. And one time, I don't know anything about oranges, okay? And I've only lived in our house a couple years. Okay. Someone told me it's like gone wild. Okay. 
Is that a thing that I, you've ever heard of? I, it has spikes on it oh, you, that are like this big. Yeah, you probably probably a I mean, rootstock. It could kill you. You probably grow in a rootstock. So, have you heard of those? Is there a way to make those oranges taste good, or do you think it is like a wild orange? It's probably wild. Yeah, wild. It's a rootstock. We use those. You know, you're looking at this tree. Yeah, right yeah, here. kind of like grapes. Yeah, how grapes. We do root you have your scion. You have your fruit wood, and then you have your rootstock. And I, at my, at my place, I got a couple couple trees where uh, it's just the rootstocks that's grown, and there's thorns everywhere. And it has it has a bunch of little small fruit compared to all its the neighboring trees where where that's the actual variety you're trying to farm big difference in size and the taste I mean, it's they're terrible. sour it's terrible not good. but they're great they're great healthy robust roots and that's why you choose them to be the root portion of the tree and then you put the good tasting fruit on the on the above the ground okay and graft it that so way so it just is what it is it probably is so you just need to cut it and regraft it and you have a you'll have oh, a no. <laughs> it's a huge tree we're not but this the everyone's just always like why don't you eat those oranges and i'm like no you don't understand yeah. they're not any good no bueno get over here and see what they have here in the field you could get a little a little glimpse of what's over there in citrus we have these wind machines oh oh yeah okay you can't really i don't think you can see can it, you it see blends that? in but there's a huge windmill basically yeah, it's a, that's what it looks it's like it's only got two two blades two you blades know? Yeah. yeah and what that does is when it gets really really cold because you have this crop i mean i, I, don't, I don't know I think this is pretty much the only crop in the winter time that that's that's actually uh, that's actually exposed to this type of winter environments. You have to protect them. They can tolerate a certain amount of cold temperature, but when you dip below 32 degrees, it starts to get a little a, a little dicey. So, mm -hmm. um, so what they do, they'll turn those on. There's an inversion layer. It's always a little bit warmer for the most part. It's always a little bit warmer, uh, 30 30 feet or so above above the the ground here, and they'll turn those on and they'll circulate that warmer air. And, and flush out this colder air and, and make it a little bit warmer. You ain't no agronomist unless you're digging all the time. <laughs> half of your work is above, but the other half is is below. You know, and that is that is the root. So, so let's just let's just see what what this one what this one has here. Get Matt his workout today. This is this is what I love when you when you put that shovel in there and it's hard. You get that camera in there close, Tara. <laughs> when it's hard to pull it up and what you hear is a snap crackle pop like that yep that hopefully is, you all heard it that is a good sign and you're probably thinking well that you know that it's because it's roots everyone has that and that's not the case mm -hmm. it doesn't it's not always like that and so this is what an agronomist is very simple what an agronomist is doing you're, you're checking roots you're seeing the healthiness you're seeing this this lateral the root extension um, you, you like to see that the length there you want to see what the aggregates are like. Do you have worms in there? Do you do you have a nice, you know, crumbly soil? And it, it be due to the you know the, the the macro and microbiology that's that's working that soil. And so we we use information like that to be able to just to get a really quick understanding of how healthy the soil is, how healthy the tree is. It's very that's like day one training agronomy right there so and you and i do, still do it i still do, do it with any kind of crop, oh, definitely right? definitely and now is there anything that we would we could have seen there that would have been like an instant red flag like something yeah. is wrong yeah no roots if you had no roots for sure red flag and and that can happen a lot okay yeah definitely does it grow this year's crop and next year's crop at the same time this, is that this one, or is that only yeah. a certain type of citrus? I no, feel like I've sure. heard that. If you don't harvest it enough, the, this citrus is going to be on here. In the next, in the next, uh, the crop's going to come. It's going to bloom, and you'll still have this on here. But this will completely get cleaned off. For sure. Yeah, they'll harvest the whole thing. You want it all to be harvested before the next crop comes because this is this is uh, taking up energy. Right. And you don't want this energy taken up when you got new babies coming. Is this ready? Uh, this one's not ready, no. It's very they, hard. Yeah, they're not Ugh. ready. They'll give it, I know, another couple months. Another couple Hope months? For this one, yeah. Oh. There's a lot of different varieties, navel varieties. So, okay. So, do you want to show us where we're at? Yep. And so, I'm not exactly sure when this video is going to come out, but it is January 12th. Mm -hmm. So, if it comes out in the spring, you know why it looks like this. Exactly. We are, we're in dormant, and we are in table grapes, which is totally different than what I do. Yes, so table grapes, you're busy all year long. All, there's not really a downtime. Um, and like you said, you probably, you don't see a lot of table grapes where you're at because you need to have a certain climate. It needs to be, it needs to be warm, it needs to be hot, and it needs to be dry. 
because if you, if you have too much humidity, the table grapes, they're prone to, to, to get mildew and it's very difficult to have a good quality uh, products. This is all, all these are, are, are new, are new canes, okay? And these things, if you look in it real close, you can see the buds. These will pop shoots, which you've seen. Yep. The inside there, the shoots will start growing and you'll, that's where you get your grape cluster. So, in, in all this will we'll grow and it'll, it'll lay up here. All these new, these newer canes will lay as they continue to grow. Okay, so you keep everything on the top. On the top. This, okay. This is a little bit different, but, so let me, let me just get you a little bit closer more idealistic look at what it's gonna look like when it's all done. No, that's really interesting. So these will all be so different. Yeah, these will all be tied with little twisty ties like you see on you know your bread. You know the, <laughs> the twisty ties. It's what we use out here. And we'll Fancy. tie that we'll tie that all down. These buds they'll shoot new growth, you know, and as they go over here, we want to have sunlight come down and hit hit down here. This is this is where we get good uh, renewal canes for next year. We gotta have sunlight, and so what we'll do is when once these once these shoots have gotten to a certain size or a certain height, we'll start push lean them this way, and then we, we do that, and so it kind of causes them to to lay down up here. Okay, that's interesting. And it, and it allows sunlight to come to come down. Okay, so it gets picked right here in the field, yep. tractored out, bagged, goes to the store, mm -hmm. and are these green grapes these are green or these grapes. red? Yeah, these Seedless? are green grapes. You, well, you could tell. If Are they seedless? In, if you get in real, really close, okay. if you look down, if you look at these buds, you can see the colors. It, it, they'll be black. I'm just joking. You know that, right? <laughs> Let's see. Can you guys tell? Does it look green in there? I don't think I can get it clear enough. Okay. Is there anything you wish people knew about growing grapes? Anything that I wish... I would... You know, I, I work with a lot of different crops and I would say when you look at table grapes the amount of effort and the amount of table grapes are hard they are really very very hard They'll, they require a lot of hand labor a lot of a lot of supervision there's not nothing is really mechanized compared to other other crops and so when you go to the store and to, to purchase you see table grapes there just know that there's a lot of a lot of of uh, TLC that went into to that crop. Yeah, all manpower. Yes, right. Do you do raisins as well? I feel like I've seen you do, do you post some pictures of raisins or no? You know, af after everything's been harvested for the fresh market, all the yeah. table grapes, if there's anything left behind, you know, we, we'll have people come in here and they could just take the scraps, you know, the you want to call them the coals or yeah. the, or glean the field and they'll take them to a, a, a dryer and they'll dehydrate them. Okay, and, but you guys don't do any raisins in the field or anything? No. You don't do any of that? No. <laughs> well, one more thing that I'll add about table grapes is they can be fun or very, very challenging, if you want to call it that, because you can manipulate it in so many different ways. We have almonds, what you're pretty much wanting to do is you're wanting to, you're wanting to set as much crop as possible and you're wanting to size that. With table grapes, you actually you're dropping fruit right throughout throughout the whole year there's you could come in here multiple times and drop fruit but you're wanting to size it like like the other crops and you're also wanting to to influence color you want to influence the sugar content all these different things that you try to do in and every year it's different because mother nature you're 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 having to you're you're having to uh, to manage with, with her and how she wants to do things and, and sometimes it's very difficult to, to execute on, on what you're trying to do because she says no you know this week's we're gonna do you know five five degrees warmer than it was last year and that changes everything mm -hmm. of how you manage and so table grape we, we laugh about table grape growers because based off what they do we always talk about you know they, 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 they go off of what the you know what the moon is for that night and that'll dictate how they're gonna farm or spray the next morning so it's very it's very very frustrating at times but because it's so challenging and it's always there's always something new every year is different so yeah. and it makes it, it that's what makes it very hard too so okay so for me for me really the only thing i need to affect is sugar mm -hmm. we call it bricks mm -hmm. which i'm sure you guys do too right and that's basically water for yeah. me yeah. so how do you affect color is that water as yeah. well it, so depending depending on uh, what your soil, what your soil has, and everything, you may need to add potassium, and then you may need to add uh, phosphorus. Those oh. two things can help with finishing your crop, helping increase your bricks, and also help with coloring as well. Okay. Cold temperatures at night. A lot of growers, you know, when when the when the crop is at it, it's set, they have their sugars. 
the last thing they're trying to do is get that 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 uh, fruit to color up. Cold nights really help do that. Okay. So when you have warm summer nights, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard. Mm. Very hard to do. So yeah. All these things. That's what I get. Mother Nature. Yeah. You know, it you, is. <laughs> I know. And then, do you guys get smoke taint here? I I never heard of that until this year. Oh, okay. Did you get it here? I we, I don't think we not not in these grapes here, but. Uh, I, I, know, I know the wine grape growers were really hurt. That. You know, another thing I was surprised driving here is like there are some little baby trees yeah. and they're loaded. I mean, they look small. They could have been uh, sumos. What's that? It's just, an, it's a, it's a. Are they a permanently variety. short tree? Yeah, they're smaller. They're a smaller tree. I feel like I hear children. Yeah, there's kids too. These freaking kids are on my property again. Go yell at them. <laughs> Get them, Matt. <laughs> I don't know who they are. Okay, so we learned what an agronomist was, is. A little bit, yeah. And uh, I guess if someone wants to, like, what would you say if someone wanted to be an agronomist? Like, is there, like, a an easy path to mm -hmm. get there? Or, you I know, guess. if someone wants to be an ag but maybe doesn't want to be a farmer, is an agronomist, like, a good path? Oh, for sure. For sure. I I get that question a lot, actually, on, on Instagram. Oh, okay. People want to know, how, how do you become an agronomist? And I would say the easiest thing to do is, you know, I, I did a plant plant science major okay. in uh, in college, and uh, you know, you know, big big farming operations, they're they're always needing an agronomist. Uh, you could look for uh, sales jobs, people, you know, like myself that sell fertilizer. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of positions for agronom agronomists and good agronomists. Yeah, because some like really big farms, mm -hmm. they'll have like a dedicated agronomist, exactly. right? Exactly. Where you're basically on staff. They'll have their own PCA, pest right. control advisor, right. their own farm manager, and they also have their own agronomist. Okay. And the three of them, you know, work together. Okay. And then, did you have to have a master's? I didn't. No. So it's like you get your bachelor's degree, and then there's like another test or something you take to be an agronomist, or no? Yeah. Because no. I feel like PCAs have to take a yeah, test you, or something, right? Yeah. If you right? want to become a you know certified crop advisor. It's a crop advisor, thing for okay. An agronomist. Uh, I, I did that, and uh, but no, you necessarily you, you don't need that to be to be an agronomist. Okay, so basically just the bachelor's degree, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then find a job. Yep, <laughs> which is the hardest part. Find a job, part. the hardest part. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much yeah, for meeting with me today. And we were saying that I'll have to try to come back in the spring or another season when more things are growing. Yeah. And it'll be more fun then when you can actually look and see the fruit, like the grapes. Well, I thought that was really still interesting because okay. it's totally different than mine. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and most of the people watching are not farmers, I right, think. Right. So it's all new. It's all new. You yeah, know, it is. Sure. I always think I'm not interesting too, though. So yeah. I totally. Well, that's not true. I feel you. But we need to come when we can taste the fruit. Taste the, taste I the cherries. Taste, taste, the, taste the, the blueberries. Taste the table grapes. Do people grow raspberries out here? I that I, sounds so good. I haven't seen big operation raspberries. I've okay. seen little people who got, you know, a couple of rows of raspberries. They yeah. have a fruit stand, but that's about it. But the blueberries are big? Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You and if you guys want to follow Matt, I'll put a link to his Instagram. That's the best place, yeah, right? that'd be great. Yeah, for We sure. need that's to blow at. Matt up. Yeah. We do. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any last words? Yeah. I did nothing. Thanks. Thanks for coming out. That was fun. I, I was scared. I was scared, like, because you're I'm so very popular. In, I'm so intimidating. You're so popular. You I'm know? not that popular. <laughs> I'm not that popular. But it was fun. This was fun. We need fun. to do it again. Okay. Do it again when it, when everything's growing and there's a lot more to see. Yeah. That'll be, you know, it'll kind of. And we'll meet in a different area. Yeah, Because sure. you have a pretty long yeah. span. Yeah, there's places we could go. So we'll see some different crops. Yeah. I mean, it's it's this time for yeah. these guys. It's perfect so. for oranges. This is a perfect time. Yeah. But uh, this is only one of the many things that I that I look at each day. So. Yeah, I'm sure in the spring you got a lot more going on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Sustainability. It's who we are and what we do. We're in it for the good of farmers. We're increasing the livelihoods and sustainable practices of 500 million smallholder farmers. We're in it for good.